Meanwhile, this week, the nation's economic challenges deepened. Inflation hit a new 40-year high. President Biden traveled to Iowa and North Carolina to talk about what his administration is doing to address rising prices. Our economy has gone from being on the mend to being on the move. Now, I know that we're still facing challenges of high prices, inflation. We need to address these high prices and urgently for working folks out there. Um, in the meantime, many Republicans are focusing their midterm election strategy on culture wars, issues like abortion, guns, and medical care for transgender young people. Eugene, I want to come to you to talk about this, this strategy by President Biden, but there was some eye-popping reporting in Pol Political Playbook. Of course, you're a co-author. Um, I want to read it because President Biden's campaign pollster said, this is possibly the worst political environment I've lived through in 30 years of being a political consultant. That is uh, just striking to, to hear. I wonder what you are hearing from your sources about the challenges that Democrats face and their strategy for navigating them. Yeah, I mean, they are just as concerned as John Anceloni is, right? When you talk to them, especially, um, you know, on background, when they, you don't have to tell people their name, they'll be a lot more blunt, just as blunt as he was, because they see the same things we see. They see inflation. They talk to their family members around the country who have higher gas prices all of a sudden, and, and that people don't see a way out of this. But I will say Anceloni also talked about the importance of the um, administration members of Congress, Democrats, in passing some form of the social spending bill that was promised, right? We have seen that stalled since last December um, and fits and starts throughout. Um, and when they get back in just about a week, they're apparently going to start negotiating this more and, and negotiating this in earnest. And if they're able to do that, if they're able to pass some kind of bill, the hope that Democrats have is that that will help blunt some of this, right? If it's not, um, if they don't keep the House and the Senate, at least um, stem some of the bleeding so it's not a bloodbath, then, then it's not as bad as it looks right now. But, you know, when you talk to um, Anzalone and he's feeling that way, it does tell you how the administration's feeling and possibly even how what President President Biden is hearing from folks um, that he talks to consistently. I want to also ask you about what President Biden's hearing from fellow Democrats, because the Biden administration um, has announced that it's going to be restarting selling leases to drill oil um, and gas on federal lands. What's your reporting reveal about the, the tension here between Democrats on climate change? On the one hand, activists want to see less reliance on fossil fuels. But of course, you have a White House that is just trying to make sure gas prices don't go any higher. Yeah, the climate community is split. Like, like, like Democrats typically are on, on these kinds of issues. You have one camp who really understands that what President Biden is trying to do is address what they think is a short-term problem, right? Getting gas prices to a better place, especially because you have the midterms so close. But on the other hand, you have a lot more, a lot of activists who say, well, wait, you promised us to work on climate change, and here we are talking about drilling more in the United States. There's a huge concern that there that the administration's promises on climate um, are not going to come to fruition because of where we are and who knows how long this war is going to continue as the administration figures out um, how to blunt some of that. And when you talk about gas prices and the administration calls it the Putin price hike, that inflation was going on before the um, invasion, right? And so that's something folks should remember. And one of the things that I've heard a lot from climate activists over the last week is that they're frustrated with the White House because they feel like this was an opportunity to say to the American people consistently in every single speech, you know, this is why we need to get away from fossil fuels in this country. Look at the other ways that we can bring energy to America by focusing on other aspects of this and not focusing on oil. And they've told the administration this. And so we'll see how that plays out as we, as we move forward. And Mariana, there's also, of course, that the, what's ha happening on the GOP side. Uh, we see Republicans um, passing all sorts of laws, focusing on culture wars. You talk to a Republican from Florida who's saying they're not shying away from these issues. Um, what's the significance in the strategy here of, G of the GOP leaning in on these culture war issues? Yeah, you know, when I talk to Republicans, it's pretty interesting to have them explain, okay, we are getting attacked by Democrats, sure, with how we're framing these things. For example, the don't say gay legislation that Governor Ron DeSantis actually signed into law last week, that isn't good for them. And they acknowledge that. They also acknowledge that, you know, what you actually played, that 
ad by Kay Ivey, the governor of Alabama, where she says, you know, we're going to start speaking Spanish. And, and that's not OK. They don't like to see that kind of extremism too much because they know that that can alienate certain bases. In terms of don't say gay, that could be suburban women. In terms of, of, of what uh, Governor Ivey was saying there, that, of course, is the Hispanic vote, that Republicans are making inroads. However, if you explain those issues, that is where they see a lot of turnaround. In terms of that one uh, congressman that I actually spoke to from Florida, a Republican, you know, they were saying that when they are back home talking about that legislation, not saying that it's don't say gay, but the fact that, you know, we want to make sure that you as parents know that kids are being taught this at a very young age from pre-K to third grade, that gets a better reception from parents. And then Republicans, for the most part, have very much been looking at a number of culture issues and turning it back to that the issue of choice. And it's a strategy a that has choice. been working for them. So Eugene, I have about a couple second, a couple of minutes left here. I want to try to split it with you and Peter, but I want to come to Eugene for a minute here just to, to, to talk about sort of this strategy. I was in Alabama talking to transgender children who say some of these laws are detrimental to their health. Um, what do you make of this strategy? Yeah, I mean, it's a strategy, like she was, like was just said, that Republicans think is going to work for them if they're able to explain it in the right way and couch it in some kind of parental rights. Um, you know, what are, what are we teaching your children? But then when you actually look at the kinds of things that are being taught in schools in K through third grade, like with these don't say gay bills or talking about not talking about gender identity in schools, kids aren't being taught that, right? There is not like people are being taught, kids are not being taught, taught about sexuality. Um, and so that is something that when you talk to parents of transgender kids, when you talk to advocates, their concern is the effect on that, the effect of having kids continue to press that within themselves when we know the rates of suicide among that community, especially for young folks, is already very high. So the concerns about how this actually plays out um, in the long term and short term and medium term is, is a big concern. And Peter, in our last 30 seconds here, you told our producers um, the Democrats are in desperate straits, but we saw the president go to Iowa and North Carolina in just about 30 seconds. What can you tell us about the politics here? Yeah, look, he has two real missions here. One is to try to do what he can to get uh, inflation under control. Two is to be seen doing what he can to get inflation under control. The problem for a president is there are only limited tools a president has uh, that can really impact that on a short-term basis. And that's a, that's a frustration for this administration. They don't have a lot of time left, as we just talked about with the midterms coming up. So what you need to have, or the White House feels like it needs to have, is, a, is a, at least an image of a president who understands the concern is out there and trying to uh, address them as, pos as aggressively as possible. Yeah, well, a lot to talk about. Thank you so much, Peter, Eugene, Mariana, for joining us and for sharing your reporting. We'll continue our conversation on the Washington Week Extra. This week's topic, new text messages reveal just how far some Republicans wanted to go to overturn the 2020 election. Find it on our Facebook, on our website, and on our YouTube. And tune in on Saturday to PBS News Weekend for the latest news from Ukraine. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yami Shalsendor. Good night from Washington.